our jobs uh, when we are working in development and humanitarian assistance field, uh, you are negotiating a lot of things. Uh, you're working at the grassroots level, you are facilitating negotiation of what people need, you're trying to work with authorities. So I would say negotiation is part of the life and career that we have. You know, I speak Tamil. I come from India, from the southern part of India. I speak Malayalam and Tamil. And I was deployed to Sri Lanka. My first instance, uh, I would say, of negotiation was to actually get access to the camps where people had converged. I recollect very clearly that every time I had to talk to somebody or I had to meet up somebody, I had to explain all over again, oh, who am I, what I'm doing, uh, why am I here, and, and what would be the outcome of the conversations that we will have with these people um, who were really uh, eager to talk wanted to share their stories. I did see in that incredible two weeks journey uh, um, how many stories uh, uh, touched my heart and how much they could share and in a language that they were very easy, uh, easily uh, uh, conversed with me. I didn't need an interpreter so I could really get first-hand information and that really helped us uh, as my organization was putting together a response plan. I would wish, I had wished at the time, if I had had any formal exposure, maybe it would have helped me do my work better. But I relied on uh, my ability uh, and my experience of working with um, village, township, provincial, subnational level, uh, and my interaction with a lot of government and other stakeholders. Definitely now, when I actually go through different trainings or different uh, meetings with practitioners, who are you know, start negotiators who are being formally trained for mediation, uh, for diplomacy and negotiation. I, I really benefit uh, from listening to them and from tips that they provide. You know? So I guess one has to look at when you're in the, in the beginning of your career, learning as you do, and then you really get into formal learning as a leader or as a manager, uh, you, can, you can bring the two together in you know, your practice. I think the biggest advantage of humanitarian collaboration is that you are listening to different perspectives, you are listening to different experiences, and sometimes you will see that maybe this there are new things, but at the same time you feel that, oh my God, I'm not alone in this business of uh, uh, trying to find uh, successful negotiation outcomes. I think it, in a way it also brings um, uh, stronger engagement, uh, a culture of um, understanding and appreciating uh, contextually how different the problems may seem. But when you collaborate, uh, you could actually find viable uh, common solutions. So I think the focus on building the individual skills, uh, given the context in which all of us work, um, is a very uh, uh, critical area that CCHN is really investing in and the expertise that comes along uh, to, to provide that uh, or transfer that kind of skills to others. More than 500 people uh, are going to be part of this conversation. Isn't that incredible? I mean, I believe that the power of um, understanding, the power of engagement uh, is bringing people together. And I think CCHN has played a key role and will continue to do so. It will be very important for all the people who are participating to listen to each other, to understand the variety of challenges the world is currently facing and how we fit ourselves as part of the solutions. <laughs>